Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Jeskai Colored Domain deck featuring four copies of Sphinx of Clear Skies, as suggested by my supporters on Patreon, a 5-mana 5-5 flyer with Ward 2, meaning it's pretty difficult for the opponent to answer the Sphinx favorably once it's already in play, and if the opponent doesn't answer the Sphinx, then it can run away with the game very quickly, as it provides card advantage every time it hits the opponent, and it also scales with a number of basic land types we have in play, and despite only being a 3 color deck, we actually have access to all five basic land types thanks to all the three color lands from Streets of New Capanna, so we can get the full domain, and if we do, the opponent will be forced to split the top five cards of our library into two separate piles, one pile we can put into our hand and the rest goes into our graveyard, so the Sphinx can provide a ton of extra card advantage, and we can even give it haste so we can attack right away thanks to Reckless Stormseeker, which can give one of our creatures plus one plus two and haste until end of turn at the beginning of combat, and if it ever switches to night time, which we can easily achieve in our deck with the many instants that we can keep up during the opponent's turn, we can transform it into the Storm Charge Slasher, which will deal even more damage by giving plus 2 plus 0 Trample and Haste at the beginning of combat instead on a 3-4. And then we also have another payoff for Domain with Leyline Binding, that's the main reason to play white in this deck, as it can easily cost a single white mana for a removal spell with Flash that can exile an opposing a non-land permanent, so very versatile as well. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, it's kind of a blue-red control deck with some early removal at 1 mana Flame Blast Bolt, can deal 2 damage also exiling a creature in the process, Got Fading Hope as a bounce spell, and then at two mana Make Disappear as our counter spell of choice. We've got four copies of Fires of Victory, can deal damage equal to the number of cards in our hand, and we can also kick it for five total, in which case we can also draw a card. We've got Reckoner Bank Buster as another card draw engine in case we can't find our Sphinx. And then at 3 mana besides Stormseeker, of course, playing the full set of Fable of the Mirrorbreaker, which is the best card in Standard, giving us a Shaman to make more treasure tokens. And then the Reflection also works very nicely with our Sphinx, as it's not legendary, so we can have two copies in play at the same time, hit the opponent and get more cards flowing. And then one copy of Rending Flame as another removal spell to deal with larger creatures. And then two copies of Temporal Firestorm as our Sweeper of Choice, which can also be kicked to potentially save a Sphinx, for instance, from the five damage to all creatures and planeswalkers. And then there's a lot of ways to approach the mana base. I've got two of most of the trial lands, except for Proving Ground, since we don't really need black or green. And then we've got some other dual lands with a Sundown Pass, Stormcarved Coast. We've got some uh, Pain lands here with Shivan Reef and a Darker Waste, Deserted Beach, and then a couple basics, Mountain and Island. Not playing any of the channel lands, because having the basics actually helps with the domain, in case we don't draw a ton of the trial lands. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. One mana removal, two mana counter spell, turn three, either Fable or Stormseeker. And the Reckoner Raid will eventually make a 2 2 we can kill. So for now, probably fine to play a tap land. So we get to curve out a bit better. Another Reckoner Raid. So our opponent on a black aggro deck. And sure, we'll keep up our counter spell. And if we don't need to use it, we can still at least use the bolt. Put on black red, okay. And an underdog also, perfect target for bolts. Now we are behind on board. Stormseeker could maybe help, but the captains have menace. So I think we go for Fable here, and then I might end up discarding the counter spell, maybe even the Binding if we don't find white mana in time. Although if we can keep our Shaman alive, that can help. So take two, down to 14. And there's a Graveyard Trespasser. Okay. Find the Fires of Victory. So Stormseeker is going to be helpful in enabling our Sphinx to attack. If I want to attack with the Shaman this turn, I would probably have to get rid of the Trespasser. Could use the Fires of Victory, even Kicked, if we use the Treasure Token. So, if I'm tapping out for Fires, I'm probably not keeping up my Counterspell in the foreseeable future. So I could see letting go of the Counterspell and then the Binding, since I'm going to use the Treasure for Fires. 
And then I might also discard Stormseeker to the uh, ward ability here. Okay, another bolt could come in handy. But for now, I think the plan is attack. And then... I'm just gonna use a kicked fires here. To deal with the trespasser. Discarding Stormseeker and then we can just play Sphinx normally next turn. And I'm okay with the trade. I'm happy if they let us keep the Shaman. Another Reckoner Raid. And then the Reflection of Kiki Jiki, also great with Sphinx. So we have a few options here. I don't have to play the Sphinx necessarily. I could also go with Fable plus Keep a Bolts and then... Hopefully next turn we can play Sphinx and give it haste so we can connect right away. Sure. And then probably let go of the Bankbuster since we'll have other sources of card advantage. With a second chapter, hoping to find an unsapped land so we can play Sphinx and give it haste. Captain attacks. Could double block, but let's just kill it. And our opponent's got removal for reflection, fair enough. So how does that change our plan? Firestorm might not be necessary. And then do I keep Bankbuster? Yeah, I should probably keep it in case the Sphinx gets answered here. Okay, attack, play Sphinx. And see if it gets to attack next turn. Opponent's got one card left, and it's going to be an adversary with Kicker. Getting back maybe a Lightning Strike to go upstairs. Or to deal with a Shaman. At least the Sphinx blocks adversary nicely. And then we're also likely to find more interaction here if we connect. So let's see what we hit. We've got three land types, so... Opponents not really splitting up those piles properly. So we get to grab all three cards, probably not what they intended to do. Go with a Stormseeker and then probably hang on to Make Disappear. Could still play Bankbuster. And then I could crew the Bankbuster to block Adversary. Now by crewing Bankbuster, I wouldn't be able to tap it to draw a card anymore. But that's probably acceptable. Could also use Make Disappear and then Sacrifice Stormseeker so we can actually counter the Lightning Strike, which is probably better. And then next turn I could copy Sphinx and attack with two of them onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and seems fine. Just need a third land to play Fable. And there we go. Turn two, we can fires if needed. Binding we can cast for pretty cheap. Opponent on Grixis with their own Fable. Okay, I think we kill the Shaman here so we can play our own Fable on three. Could also use Binding to get rid of the enchantments. But getting our own Fable going might still be better. And then we might be able to play Binding for a little bit cheaper next turn once we play Tower, which will add Swamp as an extra land type. Bones get to one mana cut down. And Kaito, at least they didn't have a creature to attack with. So they're gonna make a ninja. Okay, what to discard? Kind of like most of my hands. Maybe the third fable is a bit much, and I would rather hit a land drop. And there's another tower. Okay. So the plan might be to cast a Firestorm, which can also deal with Kaito next turn. I guess Firestorm might also end up killing some of our own creatures here, but 
opponent might end up using a removal next turn. So we'll see. Could maybe wait to play Kicked Firestorm, so it's more one-sided. Okay, who will get to draw. And then there's also opposing counter spells to worry about, like a Make Disappear, so it's not guaranteed to resolve. Right, Pono's got another cut down. And then now we get a reflection. And we can loot. What to get rid of here? Maybe Tower and Fading Hope. Give ourselves a chance of finding an untap land. We did not. So now I might be on the plan of just fires on either Reflection or Kaito. Sure, I guess we kill Kaito here. And then I can Binding if our opponent tries to do anything fancy with a Reflection next turn. Or make Disappear. And just cycling a lounge. And another cut down. Alright, so now the coast is clear for Firestorm, I think. Only using Make Disappear on something like an Invoke Despair, which the opponent could very well have. Opponent passes. I could tap out for Firestorm, but that feels a bit risky if there is an Invoke Despair in our future. So I'm just gonna pass. Maybe our opponent has more spot removal for Reflection. I kicked Fires, don't want my opponent drawing. And then if they do go for an Invoke Despair, so be it. And then we get to hopefully resolve Sphinx. Just a Trespasser. I guess we'll binding the Reflection now then. before they get to copy the Trespasser. And an extra ninja is fine. Okay, so untap land here would be great, because then we can maybe place Sphinx and copy it to attack right away. Just a Stormseeker. So now maybe go for Stormseeker. And can give itself hastes. Or I can copy in the opponent's turn to maybe double block. Yeah, let's just pass. I guess the one problem with double blocking is that opponent just trades for the real Storm Seeker, and then we still don't have a haste enabler for Sphinx. But drawing an untapped land would still do it. So I think that works for me. Okay, there we go. Play Sphinx, copy, and smash. And our current domain is 5, so probably get a 2-card pile at the very least. And the backup Sphinx probably better than counter spells at this point. If our opponent hadn't invoked Despair, they would have cast it by now. And our opponent explodes, Sphinx of Clear Skies, claims another victim. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand could use a third land, of course, but seems keepable. Turn to keep up fires and make disappear, and then double Storm Seeker to apply pressure. Turn one island. Uh, in that case, don't expect too many 2-drops I need to counter. Play a tapped tower. And starting next turn we can run out Stormseeker. 
for opponent were to tap out for a hottie gin, we can still kill it with fires. That resolves, okay. And just an impulse. So now that we have a creature in play to apply pressure with, it's going to be much more effective to sit back on a counter spell. And then especially the werewolves, great at punishing blue decks that want to pass with their counter spells up. Opponent is blue red, okay, that does change the equation. And a strangle to kill Stormseeker. That's too bad. Well, I guess we'll try again. And this time a fading hope to bounce. At least I'll be able to play very cheap Leyline Binding starting next turn. So that's another answer to potential Hottie Gen. It's gonna be a Fable instead. Okay, well, let's go for Stormseeker. And then the question is whether... We keep it back to block the Shaman. I have a Make Disappear. I could also just kill the Shaman token with the fires before they get a chance to attack and make mana. Could also Binding the Fable itself before they get to discard and draw. So lots to consider. Opponent is at 15. So maybe turning it into a race is not a bad idea. The only drawback of attacking and letting them make treasure is that make disappear becomes less effective. Opponent actually jumping here. And the shore up, I see. Well, in that case, I guess we just make disappear, since it's going to become less effective over time. And then keep the more flexible leyline binding. Opponent discarding two islands. And another strangle, that's too bad. Okay, now probably planning to play a kicked fires of victory, maybe keep land in hand. Or I could still play it since we'll have enough to kill the reflection, and I might also want to play Leyline Binding. Another fable. Okay, let that resolve. I guess maybe before they get a token I can play Kicked Fires, not that it makes a huge difference. And our opponent's got the negate. Okay, that's too bad. So now I'd plan probably just Firestorm. Now I could still Binding the Fable. Might want to keep it as an answer to potential Hottie Djinn. Could also bounce the Fable token, so we have options. I think I just Firestorm here, keep it simple. And then we're hoping to find a Sphinx at some point to pull us ahead. Opponent discarding a Rending Flame, and there's Hadi Jin. I think I'll untap first to then binding in case they have something like a make disappear, we can pay for it. And there's a sphinx as well. Okay, I think binding... See if there's a response. Opponent's got a make disappear, so we'll just pay for it. And then play sphinx next turn. Reflection not too threatening, could bounce it end of turn, just to gauge a response potentially. I think I hang on to Fading Hope. Another Binding is excellent. Hope they didn't pick up a counter spell with their last draw step. And yeah, sadly they actually had another MiG disappear here. Alright, we'll need another Sphinx now. At least we're not under too much pressure and we still have some good cards in hand. I'll take two for now. Bankbuster is great too. Can draw now. 
and there's another Sphinx, excellent. Opponent's using Crucible to make a bunch of 1-1s. Don't mind bouncing one with Fading Hope. And then do we want Deserted Beach? Sure, lets me play Sphinx and still draw with the Bankbuster. Alright, if we get to untap with the Sphinx, we'll be in great shape. Put on digging for maybe another Rending Flame, although now they don't have the mana to pay for Ward. So maybe best they can do is find another Haughty Djinn, which we can Binding. Alright, just another Fable. That's fine, Pwn's at 11, should be able to outrace them in the air. So step one, attack. And our opponent concedes, yeah, just one hit from the Sphinx is gonna pull us very far ahead. And then we can bounce the Shaman token, still have binding, so we'll be in great shape. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's quite controlling, but seems fine. Turn to make disappear, up against Monoret. So this might not be the best hand to face an aggressive deck, as we won't be able to counter their 2-drop, which will also get an extra counter. Phoenix Chick. At least that we could still hit with a Flame Blast Bolt to exile it, and another Kumano. At least we'll keep up a counter spell now. And then Binding could also be a cheap answer to a Phoenix Chick. But yeah, we're taking at least four. Uh, happy to counter Squee, even though it might come back eventually. And then, yeah, I might be forced to kill another creature here as opposed to playing Fable. Although if we play Fable, I'm happy to trade for one of their two drops. Or I could attack and then Firestorm next turn already. So it might still be worthwhile. It's just when our removal spells are 3 mana to deal with a 2-2, it feels kind of bad. So our best way to stabilize is going for a Firestorm as soon as possible. Which means I might just take 6. And then I can attack and Firestorm next turn. Alright, opponent's holding some uh, cards in hand. If those are burn spells or haste creatures, we could still be in trouble. Can probably get rid of a couple of lands. And move to combats. And then I don't need to take any damage to cast a Firestorm. And our opponent's closer to bringing Squee back as well. Although a Bolt, another clean solution there. Alright, play with Fire down to four. And that should give them enough cards for Squee, which will put us to one. And at one life against the red deck, you can't feel too comfortable. Fading Hope deals with a token, Bolt deals with Squee. So, you know, we've got useful tools, but um, burn spells are the problem here. Firebrands, okay. At least they're empty handed. So, opponent is top decking. Squee's gone. And then, I guess we could Rending Flame the Firebrand to be more mana efficient. Could also Fading Hope the token, just to scry, since we still have a Binding and I really need to dig for a win condition. Stormseeker's not the worst, can play it. And then, let's see, if I copy with Reflection, I'll be Shields down on Binding, so that's probably not acceptable. So probably just play Stormseeker attack for five. That's good enough, and then hopefully we'll find a Sphinx soon. 
to add on to the pressure. Could also attack with Stormseeker and then keep the Reflection untapped. And then if we don't need to Binding, I can copy Stormseeker end of turn, which will deal more damage on the following turn. So that may still be worth it. Would be great if it switches to Knight here. All right, opponent had the Lightning Strike, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, hand seems fine. We'll need a second blue source eventually, but for now our plan is pretty simple. Double make disappear to buy time, and eventually I'll land a couple Sphinxes. Turn one initiates, not a big deal if we can prevent them from resolving a relevant two drop. Hotshot mechanic, yeah, I guess we have to counter here since it still trains the initiate. And then I can play a tap land, that's our double blue. So one land away from playing a Sphinx. And Adlin certainly worth countering as well. Alright, we're out of interaction here, so we're gonna potentially skip a beat here. Alright, Bolt's not bad, although now... I still need a land for Sphinx. And a welcoming vampire can provide the opponent with some card advantage. So let's kill the initiate. And a Stormseeker is not bad, I guess. So now if we find a land, we can actually attack with the Sphinx right away. Guardian of New Banalias, okay. Draws with a Vampire. Would be very painful if our opponent has the uh, three mana Peacekeeper naming Sphinx, because then all three copies would become more expensive. It's going to be a Brutal Cathar instead, still pretty good. And I guess we'll fires now. Could also kill the Welcoming Vampire, as opposed to Brutal Cathar. I think we'll be able to keep up with a card advantage from Vampire. If we get our Sphinx going, so I'll just kill the Cathar now. Prevent it from switching to night time. And then get an attack in for three. Probably worth it. Or we can keep the Stormseeker back to block a Guardian, at which point they would just enlist, and they might be discarding a land, so let's attack. They could still enlist here just to scry. It's going to be a Cemetery Protector instead. Okay. And a Hotshot Mechanic. Opponent draws. And can attack us for four. Alright, really need untapped land here. A Leyline Binding. Not quite what I was hoping for. So I guess now we'll pass. Let it switch to Nighttime which will transform Stormseeker. And then we can Binding the Welcoming Vampire in response to a cheap creature. Otherwise, I might exile something else, like the Protector or the Guardian, if they enlist. Right, opponent just attacking with all. And did they forget to enlist with the Guardian? I think they did. Discarding a land, and then Binding takes care of Vampire, I think. Okay, down to nine. And there's a land at long last. It's gonna be a hasty Sphinx. And I'll keep Slasher back as a blocker. Plays around Wandering Emperor as well. And the ward prevents Emperor from exiling our Sphinx. Okay, opponent down to seven, so next turn we could present lethal. And we're likely gonna get some nice interaction here. Okay, Sphinx versus a three pile with two copies in hand. The decision's pretty clear.
Alright, Sarah Paragon's not bad. Can replay a hotshot mechanic. And could technically switch it back to daytime if they had played something else here. All out attack. And uh, sure, I guess we'll eat the Guardian, force him to discard. Because if it stays nighttime, then we can just fire the Paragon, pump Sphinx by two, and kill the opponent. Right, opponent discards a land, so it stays nighttime, and then fires. Don't even need to kick it, but we could if we wanted to. Kill Paragon, pump Sphinx, and that's more than enough. Could even add another Storm Charge Slasher to the board. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that definitely would like to draw Sphinx at some point to give haste with Stormseeker. Yeah, I guess it's worth a shot on the play. Double Stormseeker is not a bad start. Opponent on a red deck. And there's Sphinx, okay. We've got the double blue, so just one land away from casting it. Opponent appears mono reds, happy to kill a firebrand. And then attack with a Stormseeker. Since we're not going to be able to block an opposing Stormseeker as a 3-3. I guess Squee we could block. So there was a reason to hold back Stormseeker. But we might be able to win the race when we're on the play. Grotto definitely points towards a monocolor deck and a lightning strike to kill Stormseekers. So or points on the defensive, which is great for us since Sphinx is going to be pretty difficult for them to deal with unless they're packing Rending Flame to deal 5 damage. And even then it's going to cost them 5 mana, which they may not have. Alright, Raiju's not bad here. But let's see if the Sphinx can outrace it. That's 8 damage down to 6. And then Domain is at 4, so likely get some more action here. And those are both quite appealing. We have Fading Hope as interaction, so I probably want another Sphinx, and our opponent explodes. Awesome. So we got a revenge against Monored. So yeah, definitely a matchup that can be very play-draw dependent. And of course, Kumano, one of those excellent cards if you can play it early, that's difficult to come back from. So yeah, overall quite happy with how this Sphinx deck played out. The combo with Stormseeker seems like a decent one. You could also add green to add partners to the deck, although then you start maybe dabbling into too many colors, and if you want to make sure you have a consistent enough mana base, that's going to be tricky. Also partners not quite as good in a controlling build, since unlike Stormseeker that's still fine by itself, partners really needs a second creature to go with it. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.